Welcome to Missing Chronicles, where we delve into the heartbreaking and enigmatic mysteries surrounding disappearances. Here, we will immerse ourselves in the world of unsolved cases, thrilling search efforts, and intricate journeys. The goal of this channel is to spread awareness, foster community connections, and provide support to the families and loved ones of the missing. Join me as we embark on a suspenseful journey, hoping to uncover the truth behind these missing chronicles. Help us sustain and grow Missing Chronicles by becoming a patron on Patreon. Your contribution ensures that we can continue our investigations, share compelling stories, and work towards a world where no one is forgotten. Join us in making a lasting impact today. An unbelievably strange vanishing near empty Shasta, an extraordinary tale, all too often, when people disappear under mysterious circumstances, they are never found. However, when they are found, sometimes they have an extraordinary story to tell. This is one of those stories. The disappearance took place in September of 2011, in the Mount Shasta area at a place called Fowler's Campground, near the McLeod River in Northern California. A brief article about the disappearance appeared in the Mount Shasta News. The missing person was a three-and-a-half-year-old boy known as John Doe due to his young age and his parents' desire for anonymity. The child and his parents were camping in the area when the young boy suddenly vanished. The father was quoted as saying, he was here, and within a second, he was gone. The parents immediately notified the authorities, and within an hour, approximately 100 rescue personnel from various agencies joined together to search. As the sun was setting, after five hours of searching, a sheriff's deputy with AK-9 unit stumbled upon the boy not far from the campground where he had gone missing. The boy was hiding within a bush, and the deputy heard his cries for help. The deputy swiftly picked him up, sprinted back to the camp while carrying him, and reunited him with his parents. At that time, this was the entire story, John Doe went missing and was found hours later, which was considered a massive success. Authorities did not question John Doe, as there was no need, and the media reported it as a successful rescue operation, however, thanks to the young boy's grandmother, we learned many bizarre details about what happened to him during the time he was gone. It was about three weeks after the disappearance when John Doe visited his grandmother, Kathy, whom he called Cappy. During the visit, John told his grandmother that he did not like the other grandma Cappy. Confused, she responded that she was the only grandma Cappy. The boy then described how, when he got lost in the woods weeks ago, the other grandma Cappy appeared out of nowhere, grabbed him, and took him to a creepy place. According to John, this other grandma was a robot. He further described being taken to a cave where he saw old guns, purses, and bags covered in cobwebs, spiders, and dirt, as if they had been there for a long time. He only realized that this was not his real grandma when he noticed the way the light sparkled on her face, giving him the impression that she was a robot. John's grandma found this to be a strange thing to say and asked him what he thought a robot was. His response was that a robot is something made of metal and has a remote control. He went on to say that there were other robots in the cave that looked like people but did not move, they seemed frozen in position with distorted faces. John said that the other grandma seemed nice until she examined his stomach and tried to get him to defecate onto a piece of sticky paper, which he couldn't do. The next thing he described was being walked to a bush outside where the other fake grandma told him to hide, assuring him that he would be safe there. Interestingly, that was the same location where he was eventually found by the sheriff's deputy, when John Doe's real grandma called his parents, she thought they were letting him watch something strange on television that was fueling his imagination. However, the parents confirmed that this was the same story the boy had told them when he was discovered. They didn't know what to make of the bizarre tale. So they discouraged John Doe's grandma from pressing him with further questions regarding the incident, hoping he would move on and forget what happened, without the crazy story spreading. John Doe's grandma was particularly disturbed by the story because weeks before John went missing, she had been camping with a friend in the same area around McLeod. During that camping trip, she woke up face down in the dirt with a puncture wound in the back of her neck. The incident had a lasting effect on her physically and emotionally. At the time, she couldn't make sense of it, 
but she couldn't help but feel there was some connection between her incident and the disappearance of her grandson weeks later. So, what can we make of this story? Some have theorized that the puncture wound sounds like an attempt to retrieve DNA from the grandma, while others speculate it may have been an allergic reaction to a bee sting. Some details in John Doe's story seem too curious to dismiss as merely a child's imagination. His account of seeing dirty old guns and bags in the cave is particularly intriguing, as items belonging to missing hikers or hunters are often never found when they disappear, the details of the so-called robots are also incredibly strange, and we can only try to understand them through the perspective of a very young child. The way the light sparkled on the other grandma's face gave him the impression that she was a robot. The description of other people frozen in place with distorted faces is particularly disturbing. Were they other robots, as John guessed, or were they actually humans who had been paralyzed in some way? What was the purpose of the sticky paper at the grandma placed in front of him? This story raises questions about a cave somewhere in the woods around Mount Shasta. If the child's story is true, this cave may hold some answers. As is typical with such stories, numerous lingering questions remain, with the most important one being, is any of it real at all? Is this story too strange and too detailed to be something that came from the imagination of a three-and-a-half-year-old child? Or is it simply a wild fabrication from the fearful mind of a young boy who spent too many hours lost alone in the forest? We will never know until next time. Thank you for watching Missing Chronicles. We have explored captivating stories and searched for answers behind the vanished. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Share these videos to spread the message and assist affected families and loved ones. If you have any information related to the cases we've discussed, please leave them in the comments section. Together, we can make a difference. See you in the next Missing Chronicles.